The Sperling's test is used to identify cervical radiculopathies. The cervical vertebra, except for C1 and C2, consists of the vertebral body, the transverse foramen where the vertebral arteries pass through, the lamina and the spinous process, the superior and inferior articular processes, which form the facet joints, and the uncovertebral joints between adjacent vertebra. The spinal nerve roots travel through the intervertebral foramen to exit the spine. Compression at the site can lead to cervical radiculopathy. One cause is degenerative cervical spondylosis. This condition contains a range of pathologies that can lead to cervical radiculopathy. Loss of intervertebral disc height can lead to the collision of adjacent vertebral bodies at the uncovertebral joints, leading to the formation of osteophytes, which can be referred to as the disco-osteophyte complex. This can narrow the intervertebral foramen. Arthritis of the facet joints can also lead to the formation of osteophytes, also narrowing the foramen. There can also be disc herniation, specifically an intraforaminal type, where the intervertebral disc herniates laterally towards the foramen, also compressing on the nerve root. There are different variations of the Sperling's test, all of which act to further narrow the intervertebral foramen to exacerbate the symptoms of the radiculopathy. The first variation involves passively extending the patient's neck, laterally flexing it towards the side of the lesion, and then applying an axial compression. The next variation also begins with the extension of the neck, followed by an axial rotation towards the side of the lesion, then with the same lateral flexion and axial compression. Another useful test is the abduction test. The patient is asked to abduct the shoulder on the side of the lesion, which reduces the tension on the brachial plexus and its nerve roots, resulting in symptomatic relief.